Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2 Design. If you're animating or wanna practice animation in Blender, there are some assets you must have. One of them is obviously character rig. That's why I spent a few months with my friend Anthony to create not one, but four new characters rig. And they are free. I use these characters to create my latest short animation and this is gonna be my entry to this year's season award during the Blender conference. Check it out if you missed it. In this video, I'll go over the different features of those rigs, how to use them and their term of use. So let's start with those terms of use because I get this question a lot. You can use those characters and all the characters rig available on p2designacademy.com for any non-commercial project. You can use them to practice animation, to create your own short movies. You can use them to create portfolio pieces. The only thing I ask is you to credit me on your presentation and use the hashtag p2design whenever you're publishing it on social media. Now, you can use those rigs as tools for commercial projects. You can use them for previews, you can use them for drawover. You can do whatever you want, as long as they don't appear in the final commercial product. And as long as you don't redistribute those rigs or the file created with those rigs in your commercial product. Now, this is out of the way. Let's see how you can get those rigs. Getting those rigs is pretty straightforward. Go to p2designacademy.com. You can obviously find here our extensive courses and by scrolling down a little bit, our free rigs. When accessing the page, you can choose to get them for free or you can choose to support my work and the channel by paying $15. Once accessing your account, you can see all the courses you're enrolled in, including the Blender rigs. You will find there those new mannequins rigs along with the previously released rigs. You can then access a rig download and you will find a zipped file with all four rigs. The downloadable zipped file is called P2M library. Once unzipped, you will find this folder in which you will find the four different characters, their rig UI script, and a text file that is used by the asset library. All four characters are organized the same way. You will find the master collection to be linked in any scene you want to use the character in, and inside two collections, one for the geometry of the character and the other for its rig. Once added to your asset library, you will be able to easily drop them in your scene and all characters are shipped with a set of hand poses and one heroic pose. Now, if you're not comfortable with asset library and linking characters, don't worry, I got you covered. I recently made a full tutorial about it. You will find the link in the description. To start animating, you can drop the character from the asset library in your 3D scene or simply link it as usual. From there, as always, right click on the collection, go to library override, make, selected and content. If you now open the end panel by pressing N, under items, you will find your character rig UI along with all the rig custom tools. If this doesn't appear, open the text editor, double check that the script has been loaded and run it again, or you can simply open the script from the asset folder and run it. All rigs were made with a customized Rigify base. Rigify is a great tool once you know how to use it. More about this later in the future. The rig layers allows you to enable or disable the collection visibility, but you can now also solo those bone collections. Simply click on the star icon next to the collection name to enable the solo mode. Next, you will find the rig main properties. This is selection sensitive. Different options and tools will be available depending on the controllers you are using. Under that, we have another panel that allows us to access the visibility and the render properties of the characters. The eye icons allows you to hide the torso, the arms, the leg, or half of the character, which is super handy when animating. 
Let me switch to material preview and now in the second panel we can change the color of our character for its main color and the secondary color. You can also choose to display or not the P2 design logo. The subdiv option allows you to reduce or increase the subdivision level of the character and you can enable or disable the smooth corrective modifier. The smooth corrective modifier is not super computation heavy, so it won't slow down your animation that much, but I advise you to set the subdivision level to zero when animating. The torso controllers are pretty straightforward and classic in a way. We have the main torso controller or center of gravity that allows us to give an orientation to the whole trunk. And then you will find two IKs controller one for the chest and one for the hips. Basically, those are the three controllers I used 99% of the time whenever I'm animating the torso. But you can also access tweaker bone and FK bones through the tweaker collection. When selecting any of the torso bone, you'll be able to access the neck and head follow option. It allows you to isolate the rotation of the neck and the head from the chest rotation. So I generally set a full follow rotation on the neck and zero rotation on the head. That's how I animate most of the time. You will find tweaker bone to squash and stretch the head or give it a nice curvature. Ideal to create smear frames. Finally, I added some facial controller to build simple expression. Shout out to Ryan Nikos that had this idea when we were testing the rig. My favorite controllers are the simple FK controllers for the arms. These controllers can be moved around to stretch the arms. And for more smears and rubber limbs effect, you can use the tweaker bones. If I re-enable the torso controller, I will be able to access the clavicle controllers or shoulder controllers along with a shoulder tweaker bone that is super handy to adjust the position of the shoulder. You can seamlessly snap between IK and FK using the auto snapping tool. You can snap the IK on the FK or the FK on the IK using the proper tool and then switch from IK to FK using this slider. On the FK controllers, as for the neck and the head, the rotation can be isolated so that the arm won't inherit the rotation from the chest, which is ideal for most animations. By the way, if you like those rigs and my content, please consider leaving a like, a nice comment and subscribing. Back to our arms when using inverse kinematics, you can enable or disable the pull target. So you can control the orientation of the elbow using the pull target, that's my favorite method or using the upper arm controller. Using the same controller, you can adjust the upper arm location. One neat feature is that you can seamlessly switch parents for the hand controller and the pull target, thanks to rigify snapping operators. So if I want to do a dancing animation, for example, I can position the hand on the hips of my character, the other one on the head, and then I can switch the apartment to the hips and the head. Rigify will automatically switch parent without changing the pose. The leg setup is the same as for the arm setup when it comes to the main controllers. An FK chain, an IK chain, with parent switch, everything we covered just before. The only difference are those foot controllers. You can roll the foot back and forward and on each side. You will also find a custom pivot for the toes and a slider that allows you to move the roll toward the toe of the character instead of the ball of the foot. Basically everything you need on a leg ray. If you're following me, you may know that I love posing hands and I was pretty happy with the setup I came up with for those mannequins rig. We have a classic palm controller with a nice fall off. By default, fingers are made of a simple FK chain, no special automation, I don't like that. And when we enable the tweaker layer of the fingers, you'll find tweaker controller to control each joint and also additional palm controller to control the corporal bone individually. Now, those fingers also feature a full IK setup. 
And for each finger, you can snap the IK on the FK and it will switch mode automatically. What I do like about this IK setup is that the rotation of the fingers is made from the tip of the finger. And for each finger, you can switch parent seamlessly thanks to Rigify system. And you will find a master parent that itself can be parented to any other controller on the body. So it's ideal to simulate contact point on a surface and move that contact point freely in space or parent the fingers to whatever controller you want. This was a perfect mechanism to animate this shot, for example. All characters come with a set of corrective bones. Those are triggered automatically under the hood to fix bad deformation on the trapezius, the base of the neck, the back, the knees, the elbows. So you don't really need to animate those or pose those, but in certain cases or certain extreme poses, you may want to slightly tweak their position to improve the silhouette of your character. The hands also have these features, allowing nice shape of the first knuckle. The big character has a larger set of corrective bones and belly bones, allowing to play with the shape of his belly. It's perfect to create secondary motion like fat bouncing. But what I'm really happy about is that with this setup, the belly kind of folds pretty naturally on the pelvis. And as usual, you have tons of controls to improve the silhouette of the character. But I feel like, by default, it behaves pretty nicely. The female character also features specific corrective bones for the breast and the butt. There are two controllers for the breast, one for the root of the breast and one for the tip of the breast. The butt or the glutes are automatically triggered whenever we are rotating the leg forward so that we get a nice silhouette but as usual, you can then adjust the pose if you want. The final feature I want to show you are those two custom slots. By default, they are parented to the hand, but using Rigify parent switching, you can parent them to anything. It's not a promise, but my idea is to create rigged props that can be parented to this bone later on. And with Blender new action system, it's going to be easy to animate two different armatures in the same action. Before I leave you, remember that if you want to learn animation or rigging, I have top-rated and extensive Blender courses about those two topics. In the meantime, I wish you the best and I'll see you in the next video.